Hi guys, it's Janet. I have Natalie Trotter with me with the Atlanta Dream. She's currently in the Wubble right now. So Natalie, how's it going in the Wubble? It is going in the Wubble. We are a little over halfway done with our season. We have played, I think 13 out of 22 games maybe. Um, last regular season game for us is September the 11th and then playoffs start after that. Uh, the next couple of weeks are going to be really interesting um, to see if we can get enough wins to get us into the playoffs. But it's been great. Um, when we hit the halfway mark, I felt like that was something that uh, should have been celebrated. Um, this isn't easy, but it's not necessarily hard either. But in the midst of a pandemic, I'm, I'm pretty happy that we've been able to pull it off before we came here. I was kind of doubting um, that we make it this far and we have and the league has done a good job in making sure that we are um, safe in the wobble. At this time, I'm kind of, I spoke to one of our healthcare professionals that left and she left maybe a week and a half ago and she said outside of the wobble, things are strange because there's still people not like wearing masks and I'm I'm at our villa right now, so I don't have a mask on, but people are walking around campus in the hotels with their mask on. And she was like, in the airport, no, they didn't have on masks. So, but it's it's been good, um, which it shows that athletics can happen if it's done the right way. And if there are, are funds that are uh, able to be put into making sure that they're done the right way. but. It's been a good experience thus far. How have you managed to balance work and life and setting boundaries for yourself in the Wubble? So I'm new here um, and I was so dead set on wanting to do a great job. I'm still trying to figure things out. Uh, I actually moved to Atlanta maybe two weeks before we left, which required um, doing a lot, just just figuring it out, um, just figuring it out in general, and then now I'm here, we try to do treatment times, and um, we'll do treatment in the morning, treatment in the afternoon, and then if there's an acute injury here at night, but other than that, I try to like be done by 7 p.m., read a book, um, sometimes they do offer yoga, so I try to make sure that I am available um, to do yoga. Um, so I went to my first pool day, and that was really, really nice um, to just make sure that I'm able to, to enjoy some of the time here because we are still in the middle of a pandemic, and I have probably been neglecting my self-care and then also trying to make sure that uh, I'm getting enough sleep and uh, proper nutrition is a, a dagger, but we have ice cream in the villa. So I'm probably eating a little bit more of that than I should. Ice cream makes us all happy though. So there's, there's no wrong in that. So <laughs> next, next thing, a little bit more sensitive, what are your feelings about current events and the whole Black Lives Matter movement? So um, it's all been an eye-opening experience for me. And Janet, you're about to kill me because my I, my computer just said I percent. Hold on. <laughs> this is keeping it real on. <laughs> I love it. All right, Natalie's got power back, so let's try this again. So what are your feelings on current events, especially with the Black Lives Matter movement? Um, I am, I think at the beginning of all this, I kind of felt a little bit hopeless um, with it all. And then, you know, it's knowing there's a need for change, hoping to help be the change, um, I'm tired, like, there's a whole mixed bag of emotions because I think about stuff that 
like my great grandparents went through and that was like a hundred years ago or really not that far removed from that right now but I can't honestly say that I I had an awakening um during all this especially like at the beginning of the pandemic when I don't know it was it was just quite interesting just to really realize, oh, this is a problem because I have several um, different friends of all races, religion, sexual orientation. And that's not anything intentional. I'm like, well, I need an orange friend. I need a blue friend. Like, it just happens. Um, if we vibe, then we vibe. And I've done such a good job of having such good people around me. There are a lot of things that, eh, maybe a blind eye, maybe not, but a lot of things that I just didn't really put a lot of thought or consideration into being that, I mean, I was born and raised in South Mississippi. Um, the first time I experienced racism was when I was five years old in kindergarten because one of my um, friends at the time, um, we were in the same class, she was white. Well, I don't know, maybe I was older than five because she was my friend for a little bit of time. And I just remember being on the phone with her. It was the old school phone. <laughs> been on the phone with her and hearing her dad in the background say, who are you on the phone with? And then um, she hung up, but at any rate, then now, 30 years later, my nephew, he is six years old. And when he was probably four, he was in class one day and somebody made a comment about his skin and he used to go home and cry. And he used to be so sad that his skin was brown. But at that moment, my mom and sister were like, no, sir, you are a beautiful brown boy. And so now he's like, I can be anything I wanna be. I'm a beautiful, brilliant brown boy. So um, I think that I'm a little more tuned into it because he's a six year old black male in America and I'm fearful um, for him. Like just even doing little stuff, like can he wear a hoodie and go inside of a store and people not look at him differently because he wants to go in and buy something like, just fearful of some of the situations he could be in just solely because of the color of his skin. Um, I wish I had a solution to it. Um, I do not at all. I don't have a solution, but I think that um, until the vocal non-racist people become the majority, then we're gonna have a problem. Like minorities need accomplices and allies um, to get through all of this. And I feel like, again, at the very beginning, I was kind of hopeless, but I feel like some things are picked up and, and some people are able to identify and look at some of those biases that they may have. And they're willing and wanting to do better for like the next generation. And I think that's a start, but there are so many other people who still don't see a problem. And if you don't see any other problem, then you are probably the problem. Or like, like I said earlier, the people who I work with or the people that I've considered my friends thus far, um, for those who didn't reach out like in any of this, and don't get me wrong, everybody has their own everybody got issues going on in their life but if you didn't reach out to your friends that are people of color or if you cannot fix your mouth to say black lives matter or if you didn't type that then i now question honestly who you are and then that was a part of my process in this because initially i was like oh that just means they're racist. And I guess I backed off of that to some extent, but even now with me being vocal about it, if you do have an issue or a problem, I welcome the conversation, but 
at this point, pretty much if you don't agree with the stuff that I'm saying about Black Lives Matter, then I don't really care to associate with you. And I guess it's harder, especially being a minority, like in work situations, if there are people who you work with that said nothing. So it, it just makes, makes you think. But like I said, it's been um, an awakening for me. I'm absolutely blessed to have the people in my life who did reach out, the people in my life who do care about me as an individual, as a black female in this profession. Um, so I don't, I don't have a solution. There is definitely a problem. And if you can't see or recognize that there's a problem, then at this point, I just, I, I don't, I don't have the words. But again, it's gonna take a lot of Black America allies and accomplices to get through this. And with all of that being said, go vote. And then when you go vote, make sure you take a couple other people with you to go vote. Because, I mean, a change, is, it, it has to happen. Um, I don't know how, I don't know when, but it, it has to happen. And, and then even now, while I'm talking to you, I find myself trying to be PC, like politically correct when I'm saying things, but I mean, and I think that's where a lot of professional black Americans or professional black people in general, people in col people of color, I feel like we get caught up in thinking that the things that we may say or who we are are not what's defined as professional by just being open and honest and and true so i need to work on that myself but that's a problem i will continue to um be vocal about the issue or the problem and like i said i do appreciate my allies and accomplices who are with me on the journey all right, Natalie, next couple of minutes off for you, your final statement. Ooh, final statement, that's a, that's a good one. Um, I feel like um, our young professionals or our younger minorities getting into this profession they deserve to be mentored. They deserve to have mentors. And I feel like the minorities that are in the profession, that we need to do a better job of seeking them out um, and helping them along in this journey. Um, because obviously, um, we are still the minority, but I've heard recently that for certain um, bigger jobs, I guess I should say, that the um, minority candidates, they, good minority can, candidates don't exist. So offense to that. And I did um, go to work to try and identify um, minorities that would, that had resumes to be good candidates for certain positions. But I think that some of the um, older athletic trainers are going to have to do a little bit more to try and find these people. And it's just going to be a continuous cycle once you, once you find people. And then it's like, do unto others. It's just a cycle that keeps continuing. Because as you step up the ladder, always make sure to bring two or three people um, with you. I don't know, I am grateful for the opportunity that I have um, right now with the position that I have. I've always had a passion for athletic training. Um, I encourage um, people to get involved at the district and national level, um, network, find a mentor, mentored, 
um, because I think that it's a two-way street. I learn a lot from um, people that I mentor and a lot of that just kind of developed organically. It's not like I'm your mentor. It just developed um, organically and I find that there's a lot of reward in it for myself. Um, just being able to goals and achieve certain things but I mean we have a lot on our plates right now we have pandemic people worrying about their jobs we have um, social injustices which have been going on forever but I think that we're tired and enough is enough so I'm hoping that we can move forward and that and then on top of all that we have a pandemic so I don't know. It's take care of yourself, have a little bit of grace, and just love, love big. And if you have to hate or be angry by it, just let it go, because it's taking a, a lot of energy and time that we don't necessarily have right now. So I think that I would end with that. I'm sure I could say a lot of other stuff, but just just give yourself a little bit of grace and at the end of it all we're gonna be okay and check on your people like just even if it's once a week shoot out a text say hey how are you if it's somebody you haven't talked to in like two years you just never know that could make somebody's day natalie thank you for taking the time and i'll talk to you soon <laughs> thank you janet <laughs>